Okay. Well, good morning. I'd like to give you all a very warm welcome this morning. Uh, we're well attended. My name is Howard Greenman. I'm the chair of the Strategic Planning Committee, and I will be presiding over this meeting today. Uh, the first thing I want to check on is that uh, you can all hear me at the back. We vagaries of the, and I can see you as well. Yes, thank you. Uh, the vagaries of our IT system does let us down occasionally, so uh, please do make some kind of motion if you can't uh, hear us. Um, we're very well represented today, but to the public at the back, I'll just point out that we have the committee in the seats uh, before you. I should be amply um, supported by Kieran, Democratic Services Officer on my left, David Cox, the Planning Officer on my right, and the Head of our Development Services behind the three people sitting at the front here, with all our legal representation. A uh, warm welcome to them all today from Foreign Climes, uh, well, Hampshire anyway. Um, it's good to have them with us today. Thank you for coming along too. Um, I am going to ask you to turn all your devices off for the duration of this meeting, or at least on silent. We have enough problems with our IT as it is without uh, other devices uh, playing havoc. And if there is a fire alarm, please do exit the building via the um, nearest exits, the, the, the two doors, in fact, you came in. Um, please note the parking services have been informed of this meeting, and therefore anyone parking in the public spaces at the County Hall car park does not need to worry about the two-hour free limit to parking. That said, I'm hoping you're not going to have to worry about that anyway. I'm not expecting that uh, hopefully it was going to be that long. Please note this meeting, as all strategic planning committee, committee meetings, has been recorded and it's broadcast live to the Wiltshire Council YouTube site, so it is on stream. Please can all members and members of the public too use their speakers, use their microphones when speaking to ensure you can be heard on the live stream. And for those of you at the back that are registered to speak, uh, please do uh, come forward and use one of the empty mics if you need to. We don't have a lectern in place today. So I'm now going to formally open the meeting. Is that all straightforward so far? Thank you. So we do have apologies today from Councillor Annie Clark. Um, Councillor Sarah Gibson isn't here either, so it's good to have Councillor Stuart Palman in her stead. Good to see you back, Stuart. You're becoming an old hand at this. And I think apart from um, Ernie, we're at a full complement today, so that's good news. Minutes of the previous meeting. It was quite a, a sticky meeting, as it turned out to be, not as straightforward as I'd first thought it might be. Have we all read the minutes, please? Right, Any? I won't ask if you all approve. Does anybody? Anybody, you've got a question to ask. Councillor Foster, Adrian. Thank Sorry, you. Howard, I should have warned you before. That's all right. Uh, two minor significant amendments. Two minor significant amendments, if that's possible. Uh, in the minutes of the 22nd of February on page 5, paragraph 12, uh, it mentions I requested a special planning, uh, a special planning uh, to fix a date for the pres uh, to present to this committee. Yep. Uh, I'd like this to reflect that my request was uh, for the promised training uh, to this committee uh, to be implemented following my request for an explanation as to why, as a council, we've not, over the, uh, not met our five-year land supply requirement rather than the way it's worded on yeah. it at the present moment. <laughs> Um, and I wondered if this is the right moment to mention that um, I'd like to be noted in this uh, minutes uh, today uh, that it was disappointing that the head of spatial planning and uh, the relevant cabinet member uh, didn't in fact uh, feel that there would be a benefit in consulting um, this committee really about the reforms to the national planning uh, policy in briefing, briefing note 2308, as I believe this committee um, has to deal with the outcomes of that. So, uh, sorry, this committee has to deal with the outcomes of that. And we have some members on this committee uh, who have years of experience and knowledge of these matters. But the second uh, I t um, in the minutes, which I think might be wise to amend, is on the 2nd of March, on page 52. Uh, it, said others, it, it states, others stated that this site um, was good, 3B agricultural land, and is valuable to produce, uh, is, 
it is unlikely to produce crops and more likely to produce hay. Uh, I believe that grass and hay are a crop and it would be more accurate then to indicate the, in, include the word arable. Therefore, it is unlikely to produce arable crops. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think we need to make that amendment. Um, so go back to your first one. Um, I was going to come to this, actually, in the Chairman's announcement, so you've just saved oh, me. apologies. Uh, no, no, that's no problem at all. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I'll, 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 um, I'll glue Chairman's announcements to, to what I'm going to say now, because you'll notice that, um, or you may, have no, may not have noticed yet, that the meeting schedule for the 19th of April has been moved to the 25th of April um, at 1.30, Unfortunately, neither myself or Tony, my deputy, can make that date, so I do apologise for that. So um, it will now be 1.30 on the 25th of April. And after that meeting, and this, is, this has to be very clear, for members only, there will be a training session, um, as you have asked for. That is for members of this committee only, um, because we re recognise the importance of this issue, and I'm very pleased to say that's uh, what uh, Andrew has come forward with. So that would be on the 25th of April at the close of business. Um, I guess we just remain in this chamber probably, will we? Yeah. So that, yes? Knowing how these things go on, is that likely to end before we start audit and governance the following day? One can, but hope so, yes. <laughs> because the meeting's at 1.30, I'm not expecting a long meeting on that day. I think we have to craft it so that isn't the case. So actually, ahead of time, you've got my chairman's announcements. Um, we do have another amendment to make, and I've got an apology because Francis Morland is here today. We have misspelled his surname <coughs> in the minutes. Um, <coughs> so we will be amending that. I know the feeling well. Many people pronounce or spell my green, green man. Surname is Greenham, so uh, I, I know the feeling. We will be making that amendment. Uh can I just confirm, Chair, that the committee is happy with the change to insert arable into the 2nd of March minutes and on the 22nd of February minutes, if Councillor Foster could just uh, repeat the change he, he wished in relation to minute 12, just so that, uh, and then the committee can indicate if they are indeed happy for that to be inserted. Um, um, yes, yeah, um, so I wrote this myself, so it's not easy to read. Yes. Um, it mentions that the viability of prop, crops are um, uh, more likely to produce hay. Sorry, I meant the, the, the one in relation to the 22nd of February. Yes, oh, the, the <coughs> earlier one. Uh, I'd just like it to be noted that I had requested that the spatial planning fix a date um, to, the, uh, to come to the present committee, which fortunately now has happened. Um, but I'd like it to reflect that that was a request for promised training uh, to this committee, it, it, hearing, I apologise, you weren't here before, but I had previously asked for an explanation of why we hadn't got a five-year housing plan, and they came, the uh, planning committee came back and said that, um, uh, our planning officers came back and said that they would provide training for us, and I'd like the minutes to reflect that it wasn't, that wasn't the original request. Yes, in this sorry, Adrian, I thought there was an amendment you wanted as well in the earlier set of minutes. Uh, I think that's the bit he would like. Yeah, that's the, the bit I'm on about. Would, would the committee be, if the committee is happy with the yeah, broad okay. thrust of adjusting the wording there to reflect <laughs> Councillor Foster's concerns, are you happy to delegate that to but the um, um, Head of Development Management in consultation with the Chairman and Councillor Foster? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough then. Yeah. So have we satisfied your, uh, your questions? We have. So are there any more questions yeah. on, the, on the minutes? No, in which case I will sign those off in due course, probably at the end of the meeting. Thank you for that, and thank you, uh, Adrian. Um, any declarations of interest today? No. I did have Chairman's announcements, and I've just taken you through those, so I won't go through that again. Um, I will just take the public through the um, process for public participation. Uh, please stop me if you can't uh, hear me or pick up what I'm saying. Um, in a few minutes, the planning officer will present his report and explain his recommendation. He may invite comments from other officers if necessary and or appropriate. And uh, we have a legal team here as well because this, I don't suspect it's going to be particularly straightforward. I will then ask members of the committee to indicate if they have any technical questions to ask of the officers. At that point, then, we will proceed to public participation. 
up to three objectors and three supporters were able to speak for each item for up to three minutes each. Now, we've only got the one item on the agenda today. I won't be too fierce as far as the three minutes is concerned. Typically, I do give a little bit of slack um, if I, particularly if I think we're coming close to, um, to, to your closing remarks. But if you see me do this, you might just wind up your comments before I have to ask you to wind them up. Um, so I will be giving a little bit of slack, but don't run away with yourself, please. Following the public slots for objectors and supporters, there are slots for statutory consultees, and I think we have one of those. We will then hear from up to three affected parish councils, and we certainly have an affected parish council who will be speaking, and the slot there will be for four minutes, again with a little bit of uh, latitude on that. After the parish councils, I will then invite the local unitary member the application to speak, and that's uh, Councillor Trevor Carbin. Good to have you with us today, Trevor. So you'll be speaking at the conclusion of the, the other speakers. At that point, I will then open the item to debate. I will ask the first committee member to speak to move a motion, which must then be seconded. Officer advice may be taken in relation to any motion, or if that may be taken um, throughout the debate anyway. And at the conclusion of that debate, I will then proceed to a vote. Is that all straightforward enough and clear? You heard that all, you know where I'm coming from and what we're doing. Thank you for that. Um, to members, planning appeals and updates, you will see the one that was mentioned last meeting, that was the Westby Waste Incinerator, that's still rumbling along in the public forum, it seems, but um, that's now formally a planning appeal and update. We've now got the result of that. Carol, you've moved your mic. Did you want to speak? I just wanted to know if we had a date when the negotiation was going to take place as to costs. I don't think we have. I think it's going to be some one way, but I'll, we'll just turn to Andrew and ask him that. Did you want to turn to a mic that turns on? Oh, it, oh he's done it now. It's okay. done it now. Um, so are you comfortable with that, Carol? Yeah. No, no. All right, we all need to, sp we all need to speak up then. Yes, if you could do that again, Andrew. Yep, yep. Apolo apologies. We didn't have a mic on, but we do now. The, the point's been taken. The, uh, so far, we have not received anything from the applicants in terms of the, the, the costs uh, issues. Uh, so um, we will report as and when we do. Adrian, Councillor Foster. Uh, just a quick one. Do we have any updates on the Yarnbrook development? Um, I know it's called a different name uh, by the council. Uh, where Persimmon was supposed to sign their 106 agreement by the end of this month. Are we progressing well with that? Uh, Chairman, the, the Section 106 agreement has not yet been signed and discussions are ongoing with, with uh, the applicants about that. Yes, I can confirm they've been actively engaged in that because I, I have been to a degree as well. Um, Christopher, Councillor Newbring. Thank you, Chair. Just for the benefit of the member of the public who seemed concerned that some of us are looking at our laptops, um, me members of the public may, may not know that they are given copies of the agenda papers as a hard copy. Those who get there in time can pick it up off the table. But we, as members of the committee, get it electronically on our laptops. So in order to um, uh, keep an eye on the agenda papers, that's why we are looking at our laptops, nearly all of us. OK, thank you. That's a uh, point taken. Have it direct. Oh, the other one, of course, the other planning appeal and updates you'll notice is the one of some while ago now you've probably all forgotten about, and that was the quarry. Um, you remember Freeth Farm, you remember walking through down the muddy lane there um, when we had the uh, viewing panel? Um, that's been dismissed, so uh, um, that, one's, uh, that one's also noted in your papers. Right, so on that note, I'm now going to move to the item on the agenda. But before I do, um, thank you, Francis Morland, once again for your late representation. Um, we will spell your name correctly out of courtesy on that one as well. 
Your late representation is very similar uh, to the last one, but I do thank you for bringing that forward. I'm going to ask David Cox, if I may, uh, to respond to your late representation before we go into the case uh, that we have before us today. Thank you, David. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Yes, yeah, so I believe the, the, the representation from uh, Mr Morland is similar to the one he presented to the last strategic committee, and therefore the response from Chris Rowe, our one of our spatial officers who deals with the five-year land supply issue counting uh, has submitted a similar response, which I'll try and read now. So the response is as, as per your what's on your late list to the members and for the benefit of the public, the, the National Planning Policy Framework allow, allows for an inclusion of a windfall allowance within its anticipated housing land supply, subject to matters that are set out in paragraph 71 of the framework. The council includes such an allowance within its five-year housing land supply and supply of the medium and long term. The council review reviews the factors that affect the delivery from windfill sites as part of its annual review of housing land supply. Such factors, including the approach set out in the development strategy and historic delivery, will vary between the authorities. As such, the method for calculating future windfall for one authority, such as that for Cotswolds District Council, as quoted by Mr. Morland, is not necessarily direct, directly transferable to that, that for Wiltshire. Any revisions to the windfall allowance within the housing land supply position will be documented in updates of our councils of the council's annual housing land supply statement. Um, and then there's another, other sec, another point he just pointed out that there are in regarding to buffers, yes, it's correct that the MPPF consultation proposes to remove the buffers from the five-year land housing land supply requirement. However, this is still on undergoing consultation and there's no direct relevance at the moment. At this time, the planned publication date for the new housing land supply statement is anticipated to be April of this year. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. And thank you, Francis. So on that note, now I'm going to hand over to you, David, if I may, for this application today, Land Off Melksham Road Halt. This is a little bit different and a little bit sticky, so I would um, ask members to note this very, very, very closely. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So this is an outline application for up to 90 dwellings, including 40% affordable housing with public open space, landscaping, sustainable drainage and with a vehicle access point. All matters are reserved except for the means of access. The recommendation before you today is to delegate authority to the Head of De Development Management to inform the Planning Inspectorate that had Wiltshire Council still been a decision-making authority, then it would be refused planning permission. As an outline application, today is primarily about the principle of development and the means of access to the site. As members will be aware, this application has been appealed against non-determination as the application was validated on 11th of May in 2022 and gone beyond the target date of the 2nd of September 2022. This was primarily due to the working through the various comments of the consultees, for example, highways and ecology who have detailed um, uh, requests and amendments to make. And for example, ecology requested um, further information on the 13th of February of this year, to which their final consultation, well, they re ecology requested final in more information, which was received from Gladman's on the 13th of February, to which final consultation response was received on the 3rd of March. Nonetheless, the appeal was submitted to the planning inspector on the 25th of January of this year. Um, so just some further re re late representations. My presentation today includes some updated slides that, were, that are different from what's being published on the website, so apologies for that. Um, and we have had three additional objections from, the, um, from, from residents following the publication of the report, um, which nothing, um, no, no, no additional actual new, new elements being raised, but I'll read the summary anyway, that the proposed access will be unsuitable and potentially dangerous. The village can't cope with this additional number of dwellings and the congested roads. The land is outside the village boundary and goes against the neighborhood plan and the proposal will result in the loss of privacy for the bungalows on the boundary of the site. Um, 
which I believe the bungalows are these dwellings here. Can everyone see my cursor okay? Yeah. Okay. So this application follows a 2015 decision um, by, by Gladman's in, uh, from, a, uh, 2004, uh, from application 14 1209 OOT on the same site for 98 dwellings, which was refused for six reasons. It had two principal reasons, a landscape reason, drainage, archaeology, and, a, and the lack of a section 106. This is when the council had just adopted its core strategy and we could demonstrate a five-year housing land supply. Indeed, our position at the time was so strong that Gladman actually withdrew their appeal. Therefore, officers understand why there may be confusion and frustration as to why this recommendation has been only to refuse for a technical reason has been made today for this application. As set out in the report, this application has re reduced the number of proposed dwellings up to up to 90, which reduces the pressure on the developable area of land and allows for more space for landscaping and drainage. Furthermore, the applicants have provided information to the satisfaction of all of our key consultees, including landscape, drainage and archaeology who formed the, reason, the main reasons for refusal last time. Additionally, ecology and highways officers are also satisfied with the information and the updates that they have received. This is why those relevant reasons for refusal have now fallen away. It's perhaps also important to note that the 2014 application was not refused on highways grounds, which was actually for more housing than is proposed in this application. <clears throat> Furthermore, the council has now received many recent appeal decisions as set out in the report which challenges our definition of, some of what development we will allow at large villages, and also sets out that even the previously described shortfall of, of modest shortfall to our five-year housing land supply, um, why recent inspectors have accepted that decision, but still allowed the appeals because we still can't provide the five-year housing land supply. That's why the two pre the principal reasons have also been not recommended to you today but from the previous application, which leaves us with our sole reason for refusal, which is the lack of the Section 106 agreement. I should perhaps point out that with, with the uh, informal hearing due for June, it would be fully anticipated that if, if, if members went with the recommendation today, that by that June meeting, that Section 106 agreement will most more likely be um, agreed between the two parties. Gladman have accepted the provisions and the request for the financial contributions. And then it's just a case of agreeing all the finer details, which would include the tenure type, the mixture um, of the affordable housing and, and all the finer details like that. So by the, by the time we get to the informal hearing, with the recommendation, there may not actually be any um, formal objection from the council. We fully accept that this application is still contra is contrary to core policies one and core policy two of our core strategy, but not due to not but due to not having a five year supply of housing, these policies are now considered to be out of date as per paragraph 11D of the National Planning Policy Framework, to which the title balance applies. There is a need for housing, and with there being no technical objections from our con internal consultees. The, title, the tilted balance is considered to fall in favour of the application as any adverse impacts do not significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits of the application, which would include 36 affordable housing units and would also be physically well connected to the village. The Holt neighbourhood plan was adopted in 2017 and is therefore over two years old and is therefore not subject to the three housing land supply that such plans um, in, uh, benefit from. So the application site is on the uh, eastern edge of Holt, which I've, had, I've included this slide just to demonstrate the elongated na uh, spatial nature of Holt and how this application site arguably, or in our opinion, would actually respect that current spatial layout of the village, respecting its um, it, Going off, the, going off the main B road and not extending too far north or south from, from, that, from, that, um, from that spatial awareness. Also, the school is located here. 
Um, and the, there are two options to walk from, from the proposed access site, either through Great, Great Parks and Little Common. There's a, public, there's, a, there's a public open space with a tarmac footpath and a long Bradley Lane, uh, Brad, Bradley Lane and up another footpath into the back end of the village. Alternatively, you can cross the road at over to the, onto the common slash uh, Melksham Road, to which is the footpath on the other side of the road, and then cross back over at the relevant point. Both, depending from the actual application site entrance, depending on how fast you walk, the, that walk is a five to ten minute walk. Um, is for anyone for anyone doing it. The green line represents the public right of way Holt Fifty Six, which runs through this part of the site. <coughs> So this is an illustrative development framework plan. These are not, um, so as it's an outline application of all matters reserved, this is potentially subject to change. Although instances of where we can put the drainage will depend on site topography, which is why it's in that location. And also with the public right of way and, and with developers not wanting to apply to divert the routes because of the length of time that can involve, this is probably how um, this is where the net developable area will be. In the, this plan hasn't actually been updated, but in the initial submission, the idea was to have structural planting along the whole northern and um, eastern boundaries of the site. That has now fallen away um, to just be uh, supplemental planting along the existing boundaries um, for various, which have been in negotiations with our landscape officer um, in, in for, that, for that reason, and with our ecology officer. Um, there's, I'll come on to the ecology plan in a minute, but there are, benef there are you get a net, higher net biodiversity score from having hedgerows and scrubs and areas of wildflowers rather than just having tree, uh, belts of trees. So that's the general layout, and then with the uh, apps, access coming off great parks at this point here. So again, it's just an indicative uh, master plan just to show how the layout would roughly go. In the report, I showed where the um, 2014 application would have been and where the development is actually a lot tighter to the boundary edges. Um, in the neighbor consultations, as we may be hearing today, these are bungalows along great parks uh, where people are stating that they will be overlooked. Um, I haven't gone into the deep, as this is an outline, we're not into the scale and external appearance of all the layout of how this development will work. But as general rules of thumb, when we get to the reserve matters, we look for 21 meters between, these are um, standards that are generally accepted within the planning world and by the planning inspectorate, that we have 21 meters between habitable rooms, um, habitable windows, and 10.5 meters between first floor habitable rooms and neighbors' boundaries. Um, and then there's also, but there's also other whole host of um, considerations that go into that, like landfall top topography, um, size of windows, whether you've actually, how many habitable rooms you've got on the back. So for example, we would perhaps look for bathrooms on the rear elevations, on the first floors, things just to reduce any potential conflict. But also as a point of view, just a point, these, this is, so this isn't necessary to scale, but the garden boundaries of these houses, just for reference, are 10 to 11 meters deep to the boundaries. So if we re request something similar on the other side, which it visually looks like it would be, those standards look like they would actually at least be met. So we're also getting two play areas, um, which are subject to further negotiations with Gladman about whether we actually have um, formal play, which we do have contributions in, in, the, um, in the recommendations to, to get those out. But that, that would be something that we would um, negotiate further um, for the section 106 anyway, regardless of today's result. And so this is the ecology parameters plan, which I've added. Apologies if you haven't had pre sight to this, but it shows that the area of mixed scrub planting along the Eastern boundary and wildflower meadow gardens here. Again, landscaping is a reserve matter, but it's also a condition that we would seek at the informal hearing. So the idea is to fill in the gaps along there. So it, buff, it bulks it out, but doesn't, it's not structural planting. But it also sets out how we are going to uh, respect the uh, back corridor 
on the um, southeast edge of the site and it's a bit for it to be buffered with, a green, with this green space to protect their flight routes and uh, various other measures to ensure that we get the net biodiversity net gain as required by the MPPF. So this is the proposed access plan into the site, um, which has been fully um, detailed and looked into by our highways officer. Um, well, the provisions are also for uh, a new bus stop and provisions there. Originally in the plans, there was proposals for a crossing here, which on the face of it does make logical sense. I mean, it helps people safely cross, but even but after speaking with the highways officer, that, that has actually been negotiated out because even a, ze a zebra, I don't understand the technical reasons why, but even a zebra crossing wouldn't meet the standards required as to what highways officers have to go with. Um, so that's, that's kind of unfortunate, but what's actually will be done there is that there will be drop curbs to actually indicate at least and allow for prams and wheelchairs and anything to cross the road at that point. There's also a um, proposal here to have a 50 meter footpath installed up to the proposed um, gate, proposed the, the gateway features, which we which acknowledge is a neighborhood plan policy. That whilst the path itself may not actually lead to anywhere specific, it actually will help with that transition from, as you're coming from Melksham, the open countryside, in acknowledging that you're entering an urban area and that there, with the footpath, then you anticipate there would then be pedestrians, which should then hopefully reaffirm that you're entering into reduced speed level area, if in case you haven't missed the signs coming through the gateway. So that's one of the one of the reasons for that. So just a bit of a more detailed view of the uh, bus stop, showing the visibility displays with and without a bus waiting there, also to the satisfaction of the highways officer. And these are, this plan is just to show the proposed pedestrian improvement plans. So public rights away officer has asked for this strip of the Holt 56 route to be improved because it's just a little mud track at the moment. And that's what the 7,400 pound contributions for. And then this is the Bradley Lane where it is a grass verge where a new footpath will then be installed as well. That would then allow for the full pavement connectivity from the site into the rear entrance into the primary school. And this is more deep, uh, this shows that public open space I mentioned before with the uh, tarmac footpath coming down, which will then link into the new footpath along the side here, across the junction, and then up into the rear part of the school. So just some brief photos of the site, just to show the, for people who are aware of it, the, the North, the northern boundary of the site is this um, interesting mixture of quite tr dense, mature hedging, tall, tall hedging and tall trees, interspersed with uh, head height, uh, low level head height hedging, and some gaps are completely um, open altogether, which is why these gaps are proposed to be filled, but they're not completely um, structural planted so as to not see the entrance into the, into the village. So the more distant views onto the bungalows at the back of Great Parks. And this is from the top northeastern corner of the site, looking back towards where our access will be, which will be roughly here and into the site. And then as we're coming into the site, just to get a closer view, an example of the low level hedging. And then this is the view from opposite um, on Melchim Road, the common, um, where our access will be into there of our Great Parks. And the view looking back out towards Melksham, again, demonstrating how the low level hedging here and showing the existing horse jumps and the equestrian use of this field, which has been established since the eighties, I believe. Um, well, the, the stables over in the, uh, that it's related to was built in the eighties when the actual um, fields were used for equestrian uh, predates my time here, which goes back to when I first started at West Wiltshire in 2005. So any, anyone knows who knows when that would, um, actually started would be um, helpful knowledge for today's considerations. Uh, and again, it's just more photos just to show the mixture of the dense scrub and the gaps that we have. A uh, closer view of our access location and then going down just to show this one pretty much shows the drop in the way the fall, the, how the site falls away to the south. You can see this, it drops quite um, 
a fair deal there. And then this is our public open space off Little Parks with that existing tarmac path. This is the Holt 56 route that we wish to improve, which leads to Bradley Lane, which comes out at my point here. And then that will be, then is proposed to become a footpath to allow for a crossing over here up into our uh, existing tarth pathway into the school entrance, which is here. Um, and that is... So just to conclude, Chair, the recommendation is to refuse had we remained the deciding authority, but for what is essentially a technical reason only and not a direct land use related reason for refusal. This reason for refusal will likely fall away in the event of the Section 106 covering all the infrastructure requirements being agreed in advance of the appeal hearing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. So. The situation we face then is that this is not an ordinary planning application as we normally see them when they come to strategic planning. This is a non-determination um, situation we find ourselves in, and that appeal has already been lodged. So, but we as the planning authority are still in a position where we have to be part of that process and engage in that process. Mm -hmm. So what you have before you is a recommendation, the only recommendation under which the planning officer would have recommended refusal. Now, we've already discussed, or the planning officer has already been through issues of workshop core strategy, the neighbourhood plan, vis-à-vis -vis the five-year housing land supply. Um, but um, no doubt you'll have your own views on this as a committee. I'd like that teased out uh, with technical questions and throughout debate also. <coughs> but do bear in mind the recommendations that's been made by the planning officer. So I'm going to open this now to technical questions, please. We'll start with you, Buff. Councillor Thrill. Thank you. Um, just, I couldn't see anywhere, and I know it's not a huge site, but um, what is the agricultural land classification, please? I believe it's three. I can come, well, I can't check on my laptop because it means me having to surf the internet. I believe it's three from when I looked before, but there is potentially an argument. We can't go into, um, there is potentially a, a view that this could, if if the applicants could actually do a certificate of existing lawful use to argue that the site has actually been used for equestrian use for over 10 years. I, because the jumps have been there since I can, since I, they've been there for over 17 years. Whether the field is a mixed use with sheep grazing, I don't know. But there is potentially, that hasn't been, that, it could be it could it could revert to agriculture quite easily, but equally, if no agricultural uses have gone on there, the 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 um there's a stables there's, an, there's a library yard that's up here somewhere that was permitted in the late eighties eighty seven I think it was, and these fields have been used in conjunction with you can see with the horse tramping so there could be an argument to say it's not actually an agricultural use although it could easily revert to that, but I don't we don't. Can't say that because a certificate hasn't been submitted, nor has it been proposed. But what we're saying is agricultural use may be a difficult argument to sustain if it's had 10 years of equestrian use. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, did you want to come back on that? Yeah. And then I've noticed Tony's got his hand up. Yes, please. Just one more. Um, the, the neighbourhood plan for Holt, that hasn't been um, updated since 2017, has it? No. Okay, thank you. Not I'm aware, but we the parish are here, so I'm sure they can confirm that. I was, I was going to ask the same question actually. So we know it's 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 four or five years old. Is it being reviewed? Is it currently under review? Do we know? I don't know that answer. To that All right. Hopefully so we'll, we'll find we'll, that we'll out. Think if we allow well, the hopefully we'll find that. Seconds in the consultation. In the... Yeah, we do need to know that. Hopefully we'll find that out in due course. Uh, Tony, Councillor Trotman. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, j just the confirmation of um, the area that is outside the framework boundary. And I, I know in the case officer hadn't actually mentioned that, but there is a line drawn, I think, just to make members aware of where it is and how that is determined. I don't know where the line was drawn for the framework boundary. Sorry, good spot. Yes, I didn't say in the, in the in mention in the uh, presentation that the black solid black line is where our large where where the limits of development for the whole large village is. Yes, I agree. 
It's, in, it's, it's stated in the report that the black line is, is, is the limit. Um, yeah, yeah th thank you for that. I realise that, but I haven't heard it mentioned, so members of the committee and the public need to um, have that in mind. Thank you. Of a technical issue. Um, any more questions? Oh, right, okay. Um, in which case, then, I'm going to um, turn to our first speaker, if I may. Um, Kate Leroy, please. Thank you. Um, good morning. Uh, I urge this committee to refuse the application. Further, that the committee should not adopt the recommendation made by the case officer to refuse on a technical ground only. Um, this planning application should be refused on the substantive grounds that the development would have significant adverse effects. First, the report's recommendation flows almost entirely from the assumption that Wiltshire has not met its five-year housing supply. In my view, Mr. Cox's review of the um, recent planning decisions was quite partial. I have reviewed the decision of the planning inspector dated 20 September 2022, so six months ago, which upheld the refusal of permission for 98 houses at Trinham Lane in Trowbridge. In that decision, the planning inspector took issue with the way in which the housing supply numbers were calculated in Wiltshire and he concluded that the shortfall should not be given substantive weight. The housing land supply numbers in Wiltshire are out of date. The basis on which they are calculated are contentious. But even if that is taken as read, it is wrong to assume that the five-year land supply means that the development should go ahead. Even if the balance is tilted, you as councillors are required to carefully weigh the adverse impacts there are many reasons why this application should be refused. I don't have much time to speak, but in the time allowed, I will highlight two. First, this development conflicts with the core strategy and the Holt Neighbourhood Plan. It conflicts with the democratically produced planning policies in an extreme manner. This proposed housing estate lies outside the settlement boundary of Holt in open countryside and comprises a poor quality ribbon development along the road, increasing the size of the village population by 12% and the length of the village by 13%. This is a serious adverse impact. This was recognised by Mr Cox in his pre-application advice to Gladman, which has been released. We've seen that, and he said then that even if there was a shortfall on the five-year land supply that this development should be refused. There seems to have been a change of view here. Second, the overwhelming matter raised by residents of Holt is the impact on the roads. Mr Cox has talked about buses and bus stops. There might be bus stops, but there aren't buses. They talk about bicycles, but you can't cycle on these roads. They're very dangerous and winding. Holt's main road is narrow. It's lined by old cottages and houses with no off-street parking. In many areas, there's no pavement or only a very narrow pavement. Park cars make the road single carriageway and encroach on the pavement. Pedestrians are threatened as cars and lorries are inches away. There are already 10,000 vehicles going through the village. At our Holt Parish Council meeting where we discussed this, Residents reported that their small cottages were shaking as lorries went past. People reported near miss accidents on the roads and junctions. This village is not a sustainable site for large scale development. The adverse impacts on residents is large. I submit that the adverse impacts of granting permission would significantly and demonstrably outweigh any benefits. This proposal does not therefore benefit from the presumption in favor of granting planning permission. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate that. Paul Wicks, please. 
Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm also opposed to Gladman's planning application of 90 plus houses. The previous application was rejected by Wiltshire Council as it went against many of their own core policies and indeed Holt's own neighbourhood plan. As Holt is a large village, new development should be no greater than 10 houses. Yet here we are again. In 2014, Gladman were asked to supply data to the council to aid their decision. It wasn't supplied in time. In 2022, council provided Gladman with an extra eight weeks, which is a designated amount under the bylaws. They haven't just had eight weeks to prepare for and provide this information. They've had eight years since the last application was refused. None of the key criteria has been addressed. Gladmans are trying to sway their version of the 2022 plans, for example, by paying for an ecology report, which is in their favor, surprisingly enough, since the noise assessment uh, was, uh, was assessed when the whole country was in lockdown due to COVID. There can only be two possible reasons for Gladman's failure to provide this information. One, they never intended to provide it and are instead content to exploit loopholes to get this application pushed through. And two, they simply cannot provide this information, in which case the application should be rejected by the council once again. I understand that the planning officer is in favor of this development and has used the tilted balance argument to overpower all previous reasons for objection. Whilst I accept that Wiltshire hasn't met its five-year land supply target, then some rejections which have previously been, been rejected, some applications which have recently been rejected could now be passed as the need for advanced land supply can overcome some objections. However, if the developers who have previously been given planning permission to meet this five-year target have not fulfilled the timescales, then this loophole should not be exploited by Gladman's. In conclusion, the plans for these, this area have so many reasons to be rejected. It seems ludicrous to say that all of these can be overcome simply for the need to build more in Wiltshire. We have 232 local residents who have objected to this and only two have supported. The community has been very clear and we have previously supported the tannery development on a brownfield site and the ongoing star ground development. Many would have liked to have attended today, but cannot due to work commitments and due to the short notice of this meeting. However, the Right Honourable Michelle Donalan MP and Holt Parish Council have been very vocal in their opposition to this development. I'm here today to ask that you, to, you listen to the wishes of our local residents, stand by Wiltshire's own planning policy and respect the Holt neighbourhood plan by recommending the rejection of this application. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, who are just within the few minutes. Uh, Paddy Latimer. I'm here to represent all those residents who are deeply against this flawed planning application and remind you why it is so unacceptable. There is no infrastructure to support 90 houses planned. The local GP surgeries, Bradford-on-Avon, Trowbridge and Melksham, are full to overflowing. What about schools and green spaces? What about transport? The very busy road is already dangerous, yet this is where the exit are, exits are proposed. So a big building project would be accompanied by huge disruption for a small village. Access roads would be damaged and residents' lives put in danger by all the excess traffic. Holt is a village and we have spoken up. We do not want this development. Why, I ask you, is this even being discussed? We can only be left with the feeling that our voice does not count and the voice of large, powerful companies do. If this is not rejected again, the villagers of Holt would have every right to smell a whiff of something on about the decision-making. Local residents have no confidence in Wiltshire Council's so-called expert determination that this development causes no harm to the environment. We live here and we see the trees are full of bats. This was confirmed. 13 species of bats were recorded at the site, including rare species, greater and lesser horseshoe bats and barbostel bats. 
There are also slow worms and hedgehogs. It defies common sense to believe the conclusion that these species will not be at risk of harm. We believe Wiltshire Council's planning department has been ground down by Gladman, who can spend money for reports that support the development. Finally, many Holt residents wish to be here, but due to the lack of publicity and inappropriate venue and time, they cannot be here to show their concerns. Councillors, I urge you to show common sense and respect the democratic planning policies Please reject this planning application, not on a technicality, but because it is wrong in every respect. Thank you, Paddy. And uh, Chris Lee, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, members, um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking the case officer for his diligent consideration of the application and by stating that the applicant fully supports his recommendation to you today. This application is for a development of up to 90 dwellings, 36 of which will be affordable. The applicant previously submitted an application for 98 dwellings on the site, which was refused in 2015. The current application has sought to address these previous reasons for refusal. Firstly, a revised surface water drainage strategy and flood risk assessment has been submitted and is deemed suitable by the Council's drainage consultee. This strategy has been designed to consider the impacts of climate change and me measures have been taken to ensure that there will be no adverse impacts on site or elsewhere from flood risk. Secondly, a geophysical survey has been undertaken to ascertain that the site holds a low archaeological value and this has been confirmed by the Council's consultee, who has no objection to the proposals. Thirdly, the design of the proposals has also been subject to change to ensure that development on the site will not have an unacceptable landscape or visual impact on the character and appearance of Holt and the wider area. And the Council's landscape and urban design officers are both of the view that the application proposals are now acceptable. And I would just say, Chair, in respect of the point made by the gentleman, the um, the Council's highways and environmental health officers have also not objected on, on the grounds of highways or noise. Um, in respect to the principle of development, the Council must now apply the tilted planning balance, which was not the case in 2015. Uh, finally, a Section 106 will be secured through the appeal, which will meet the requirements for community infrastructure required by the development. As such, the revised application has suitably addressed all the previous reasons for refusal to the satisfaction of your consultees and officers. Therefore, these earlier reasons for refusal can no longer be sustained. Turning to benefits, in addition to the provision of 54 market and 36 affordable homes towards the Council's five-year housing land supply, the proposals will provide a host of enhancements to pedestrian and public transport infrastructure. A new footway along Bradley Lane will be delivered, which will allow for safe pedestrian access into the back of Holt Primary School and provide not only a safe, um, second safe walking route from the development, but offer a betterment to existing residents in the area. The applicant has also agreed to pay appropriate financial contributions towards an off-road cycling route and associated signage between Holt, Melksham and Bradford-on-Avon, and the enhancement of the bus service to provide extra journeys within the existing timetable. The proposals also secure a net gain in biodiversity on the site and will provide economic benefits to the local community. Further contributions will be made towards off-site infrastructure, such as education provision and sports provision, through Section 106 contributions and SIL, of which Holt Parish Council will receive 25% of the total sum for local community projects in the village. To conclude, the Council's officers now, now identify no adverse impacts that would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the myriad benefits that this proposed development would bring. Um, we therefore respectfully invite you to endorse the officer's recommendation in respect of the Council's case at the forthcoming appeal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. Councillor Steve Siddle, please, from the Parish Council. Thank you. Good morning. Councillor Steve Siddle from Holt Parish Council. These are the Council's views on the proposed development. In 2015, an application for 98 dwellings on this site was refused for fundamental policy reasons. This application is for 90 dwellings with little tweaking. The two proposals are very similar 
and no policy has changed. I quote from the planning officer's response to the pre-application for this case in April 2022. The proposal must be considered as unsustainable development in the open countryside in the overarching context of the Wiltshire Core strategy. He goes on to examine the tilted balance based on an HLS figure of 4.72, quoting the outcome of two appeals on similar cases where the balance was not tilted in favour of the development. What then has changed with the same planning officer being convinced 10 months later that on the same figures, the balance is heavily tilted the other way? The MPPF is clear that the benefits of development must outweigh the adverse impacts. This extension to an already elongated village will have a serious adverse impact on the character and appearance of the area by significantly expanding the built area into the surrounding rural landscape. This conflicts with a core principle of the MPPF to take account of the intrinsic character and beauty of the countryside. The B3107 through Holt passing this site carries over 10,000 vehicles a day. It is narrow with restricted parking. Residents would have to out-commute to work and drive to local amenities, leading to an unjustified increase in car journeys, contrary to MPPF policy. This is not sustainable development. The Drenham Lane Trowbridge appeal decision last year made clear that the HLS 4.72 figure was pessimistic and not a significant shortfall, yet the council remained silent on current HLS. The government is updating the MPPF and proposes to remove the buffer from the HLS calculation, which should take Wiltshire to over five years. High Court judgments have ruled that the provisions of the MPPF remain subordinate to development plan policies. Local plans may be out of date, but still carry weight. Wiltshire Council is under considerable pressure with staff numbers and budgets and may be looking to limit their involvement in the appeal and associated costs. We don't believe that this is a reason to make such a radical U-turn and throw in the towel. Given that the HLS shortfall is modest and may not exist at all under different assumptions, it should be afforded moderate weight, not a complete tilting of the scales. We aren't NIMBYs in Holt. We made a neighbourhood plan to deliver new housing and have completed more than 50 new homes, which is more than our allocation under the core strategy. Constructed has started this week on 10 new affordable homes, which meet the total requirement established by Wiltshire Council. Approval of this development will bring the neighbourhood planning process into disrepute. We have done everything you asked of us, and now we ask you to reject this unwanted and unsustainable development on policy grounds. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for that. I appreciate that. Councillor Do you think, Councillor Trevor Carvin? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I'm going to ask the committee to say that they would refuse, indeed, but I want to strengthen the reasons, and I'll explain why. I'll go through the report. I'll consider the points within it, um, including the planning guidance and some recent appeals. And I have prepared an alternative resolution, which I hope the committee will consider, and I'm happy to provide that to anybody who would like to move it, uh, if it would help. Um, so considering the report, on page 67, the application is before the committee because the proposal involved a departure from the policies of the statutory development plan. Page 69, the site is located outside of the defined limits of development and in planning terms is in the open countryside. And we see this in the reasons for the refusal of the 2015 application. So we need to consider what's changed since then. Well, as we've heard, the whole neighbourhood plan was adopted in 17. We've seen successful developments at the tannery, which is recently completed, and you've heard about the next phase of Star Ground, which is just being started. And so plenty of new residents have been welcomed into the, into the heart of the village. We also have the five-year land supply question. So 12 months ago, that the supply was seen as 4.72, so a slight deficit. We're told that in April we're going to get a review of that. April is 10 days away. 
Um, and we're all, I think, fairly optimistic that we're going to get some better improved figures when that comes around. Little else has changed apart from those things. Uh, we know that locally housing targets have been exceeded. Holt has played its part in that. We know rates of construction across the county have exceeded targets. Uh, moving on to page 78, the Worcester Council Spatial Planning Officer considers all this in some detail and concludes that the pro proposal would not constitute sustainable development. The officer then goes on to say on page 79 that due to the five-year land supply, careful consideration has to be given to proposals. That's careful consideration, not a surrender. Uh, just as a by way, I'd like to draw your attention to the way the public comments have been presented in the report. Um, we're supposed to have a certain amount of natural justice in these things. 234 objections received, sorry, sorry, representations received, 232 objections to support. The 232 objections were condensed to a few lines, whilst the two letters of support were printed in full, uh, which seems unfair. Page 82 of the report, I quote, furthermore, Wiltshire Core Strategy Core Policy 2 states that the limits of development and new housing outside the limits may only be altered through the identification of sites through a site allocations DPD or a neighbourhood plan. This application site is not identified in either the Council's Wiltshire Core Strategy or the Housing Sites Allocation Plan of February 20, nor within the 17 Made Holt Neighbourhood Plan. Therefore, there is a conflict with Wiltshire Core St uh, Strategy Policies CP1, CP2 and CP7 and the Neighbourhood Plan. It then goes on to discuss the tilted balance and the 2022 estimate that in 21 the shortfall was 28 years. As we said. Um, if we allow this site, then by the same logic, we allow any site, any field to be built on, and our plan has no meaning. The landscape impact on page 85. 2015, it was up to 98 houses. Uh, this application is up to 90. Uh, that's seen as a significant difference by the report. I think most people would say that's not a particularly significant difference. Um, the previous landscape reason for refusal said the proposal would have an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the area by significantly expanding the built-up area of the settlement into the surrounding rural landscape. This will be highly visible, particularly from viewpoints to the north and south, and would conflict with the core principle of the MPPF to take account of the intrinsic character and beauty of the countryside, and with policy CP51 of the Worcester Core Strategy. There's a bit of twisted reasoning in the report uh, as to whether this is visible or isn't visible. Uh, would you see it? Wouldn't you see it? Um, and if you did see it, it contributes to being by being visible, so you know you're coming into the village. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. The greatest absurdity, I thought, was to claim that because Holt is a long village, then making it longer along the road is good because it enhances its linear character. Which is an argument for ribbon development, which, of course, is one of the things the planning system was invented to prevent in the first place. The landscaping reason for refusal has not been addressed and should still stand. I just want to say a word about sustainability, which is a much abused and overused word in the report. It's kind of reduced to meaninglessness. But we are supposed to be supporting sustainable development and refusing unsustainable development. Uh, there's reference to encouraging walking and cycling. Now, if you're a keen rambler or a professional cyclist, you don't need encouragement. So our policy is aimed at the mainstream people who are ready and willing to switch mode if the conditions are right. And they need routes which are safe, convenient and pleasurable to use. And by those criteria, it's difficult or impossible to get from Holt to any other settlement, not even nearby ones such as Broughton, Gifford or Staverton, except by car. The proposed funding contributions are fairly derisory and there won't be enough to change that. Bradley Lane is a safe walking route to Bradley Lane already. You don't need to pave that verge. It's perfectly safe along there. There's almost no traffic. And it, what there is goes at zero speed. Um, the idea of a cycle track from Bradford to Melksham. Oh, this is a contribution towards that. Well, it's about 10 yards worth, probably. Uh, it's not going to happen. Bus services, as we've heard, are limited. Um, all the facilities in Holt... The shop, the pubs, the village hall, the churches, the playing fields, they're all at the other end of the village. So even internally, this doesn't really carry much sustainability with it. Um, and if you consider the education report, yes, the primary school is walkable, but the early years provision is a car trip away in Bradford. And the secondary provision, of course, is all over the place, maybe Trowbridge, also Bradford, Melksham, Corsham. People do travel in all directions from Hope to get to secondary school. Uh, let's look at some of the appeals. 
The uh, Purton Road appeal, April 2020, Inspector Alison Bell argued that there remains substantial benefit in maintaining a plan-led system. The overall strategy of the core strategy to direct development to the most sustainable settlements remains desirable and accords with the objectives of the framework. The appeal site was not located in an area supported by the development plan. It would involve housing development in the countryside, remote from all settlements identified for development in the core strategy, a clear conflict with CP1, CP2 and the local uh, relevant strategy. The Drynham Lane appeal we've heard about, again, the inspector Leanne Palmer, even accepting the appellant's assessment that there is a 4.28 year supply. There's always a disagreement between the council and the appellants as to what the actual level is, but they say that's not much anyway. She found the shortfall to be relatively modest. The council was taking positive steps to address this, which we know it is. And for this reason, she agreed with the inspector who determined another appeal in Bath Road Pickwick, that the shortfall should be afforded only moderate weight. So nobody's saying that it should be zero weight. We're saying it should be little weight, moderate weight, a slight tilt, not a complete collapse. Uh, the report also mentions appeals in Semington. Now, Semington does have good walking and cycling connections and good bus services, very good bus services, to all of its neighbouring towns. So of the six reasons for refusal of the previous application on page 70, numbers four and five, yes, they do fall away for the reasons explained in the report. Number six is similar to the reason proposed for this application, so can be replaced by it. Numbers one, two, and three, I suggest are still valid, and they can be recycled with just a little updating. So what I would ask, if I was a member of the committee, this is what I would be proposing, and I would invite members to do the same. Number one, the site is located in open countryside outside the limits of development defined for Holt in the Wiltshire core strategy. The proposal would therefore conflict with core policies 1, 2, 7 and 48 of the Wiltshire core strategy, which seeks properly to plan for sustainable development of housing sites in Wiltshire. Two, the proposal conflicts with the council's plan-led approach to, deli to the delivery of new housing sites outside the identified limits of development, as set out in core policy 2 of the Wiltshire core strategy, which seeks to provide new housing sites to deliver the identified needs in a community area through a site allocation DPD and or neighbourhood plan. The proposal also conflicts with the Holt Neighbourhood Plan. The proposed, number three, the proposal would have an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the area by significantly expanding the built-up area of the settlement into the surrounding rural landscape. This would be highly visible, particularly from viewpoints to the north and south, and would conflict with the core principle of the NPPF to take account of the intrinsic character and beauty of the countryside, and with policy CP51 of the Wiltshire Core Strategy. Uh, the fourth one will be as per the recommendation, as with the informative which goes with that. So in conclusion, Chairman, if we permit this application, we're ripping up the core strategy when we don't actually need to. We'll also be sending out an alarm across the county. Our towns and villages will be made aware that Wiltshire Council as planning authority is no longer there to defend them. It's one thing to lose an appeal, but to be let down by the council in the first place is indefensible. Upcoming changes to the MPPF as a result of the Leveling Up and Regeneration Bill, reforms to national planning policy, scheduled to be in place this spring, should lead to a saner way of dealing with land supply and put us firmly on the right side of the balance. So I ask you, members, to support a stronger refusal, which we and the Parish Council and the people of the Holt can take into an appeal. I would expect to win that appeal. And I'm not saying that out of any sense of bravado, just that appeal inspectors look at the policy situation logically and cold-heartedly. They weigh things in the balance, they reach a conclusion. And if you imply, apply that methodology to this application, Chairman, I think there can be only one result. So what I would ask the committee to do is to give us the tools to take to that appeal and to do that job. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, Trevor. I appreciate that. Um, David, I'm going to turn to you in the first instance. I think probably a few others as well, but yeah. yeah. Um, because I, I saw you um, writing, so perhaps there's a few things there you'd like to come back on. Well, the only, the only thing to come back on... Sorry. The... Sorry. The, the, I, could, I, I picked up there were three reasons for refusal. I didn't pick up all the wording, all of them, Councillor Cubbin, but... Um, the first one was the principle of one, two, and seven, but you included 48. I know we included 48 in the 2014 application, but 
I don't think we should have done that because that's, that's a policy about supporting rural life. Um, so if we, if we do have that, if members are to debate, debate or use that motion not to include that policy would be the advice for that one. But the one, two and seven would, would, would apply. Sorry, that's the only thing I picked up. Andrew. Yeah, uh, just yeah. To, uh, one comment on the Drynham Lane appeal decision, which has been mentioned um, in one or two of the, of the uh, presentations. Um, that decision was dismissed primarily for detailed reasons, uh, or that, 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 that uh, application, which related to the lack of master planning and the, lack, uh, and the impact on the immunity of residents and highway safety. Those detailed considerations tipped the balance in that particular case the other way, and the inspector dismissed it. They were, they, they were the principal concerns. And the, clearly the difference between Drine and Lane and this application is that those detailed concerns, as far as the statutory consultees are concerned, do not exist. Drine and Lane, interestingly, also form parts of an allocated site, but even under those circumstances, it was found to be unacceptable by the inspector for those detailed reasons. Yeah, um, was an exact quote that I read out, those were the inspector's words, they were not my words. Just a few further comments really on the uh, relevance of the development plan and, and the relevance of the tilted balance. Um, the committee of course knows that the development plan remains the starting point for deciding applications such as this. But as we cannot at this time demonstrate the five-year land supply, the MPPF requires us to give less weight to those policies, those strategic policies which relate to um, housing delivery. And that is because the MPPF tells us that those such policies are out of date. Um, this less weight is clearly what we know as the tilted balance and the tilted balance, it can be tilted back the other way if there are other issues, which are um, uh, detailed issues of objection. But in this case, and as Dave has explained in his presentation, there are no such objections from the statutory consultees. And that is a significant change in circumstances since the uh, earlier application was considered, um, uh, considered and decided. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, does our legal team have anything to say at all? You're quite comfortable with? All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Trotman. Chairman, <clears throat> this uh, puts the committee in uh, quite a difficult position as this is an unusual um, end or recommendation to us. We, we have to have uh, an open mind on all these things and reading it through the last couple of days, it seemed that the recommendation may have been my thoughts on how this particular app, uh, application should be sorted. But we've heard the members of the public, we've heard the supporter, uh, the agent as such, and we've heard uh, Councillor Carbon, you know, as div division member. And I've just been looking at uh, the other core policies. I haven't got my book. <clears throat> so I've had to have a look at uh, Google, as usual, or Safari in my case. And what worries me about this is the informative, of course, which was brought to us by the officer. Uh, the reason for refusal may well fall away in, in the event of a super, suitable mechanism, such as a 106 planning ob obligation. And most of these core policies that the officer has put to us in the recommendation relates really to the section 106s that haven't been signed. Um, it has been suggested that these may well be signed up before the inspector deals with this, in which case Wiltshire Council hasn't really got a good case against this application. Now that's where the committee have to make some sort of decision on how we deal with this. And as you know, our committee is held back with a tilted balance as it, as it is suggested on the five-year land supply. And we've had our hands tied for month after month, not being able to place houses where we want them, and using up greenfield spaces. But in this particular case, of course, um, we have other issues with the, the style of village 
areas that we have here, you know, and there has been cited that it's uh, elongating the village. And uh, that's what I have to think about. The consultees, possibly with landscaping and the issues of highways seem to support this application. But what it doesn't say, and as Councillor Carbin has quite rightly suggested, is core policy one and core policy two. And if you read through most of the issues on either of those, to be quite honest with you, I would ask the committee to consider that we object to this planning application at this stage using core policy one and core policy two. There, there are items on those core policies, which I'm sure the officers may well tease out, but especially on core policy two, uh, which respects the existing character and form of settlement, and the proposal does not elongate the village. That is one of the items, but it's outside the framework boundary and we can use those quite successfully, I believe. Core policy one, settlement strategy, you know, development of large and small villages have limited range of employment services and facilities. And we know exactly that with Holt. Most of us have driven through Holt and see the style of village, uh, a long village, difficult to get through with traffic issues. Uh, the employment range is not great. And obviously now the, we're told about um, the youngsters not being able to <clears throat> perhaps gain enough places. And the secondary schools are, of course, are miles away. So sustainability is, a, is of an issue. And we don't often go against the officer's recommendation, but in this case, I don't think Wiltshire Council have got a case against the inspector. We would lose it easily. But I, I suggest that this committee stands up to what we believe in and utilise core policy one and core policy two to object to this application. And I ask for a second. Yep. We're seconding that, Pip. Do you yes. want to speak to this? Thank you. And do I speak to it now? If you wish, yes, please do. Thank you. Um, I'm very grateful to the colleague behind me for putting numbers to this, because as you know, I can't remember these multitude of numbers, but I wrote down here, it should be refused on as outside the limits of development in open countryside and would not constitute sustainable development, which was my amateur sort of way of putting what I've heard. Um, but I'm happy to go with Councillor Trotman if CP1 and CP2 are the relevant policies for that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Pip. Adrian, Councillor Foster. Well, um, as usual, I'm happy on this occasion to endorse Tony and uh, Pippa. Um, and I understand the officer's desire to contribute towards the five-year land supply, which I've argued on several occasions that we, we should meet. Uh, and uh, we do wish, and I can understand their desire to wish to avoid the cost of an appeal uh, and taking into regard the tilted balance. Uh, but I do believe this site is wholly inappropriate uh, due to the location uh, of an unsuitable road, which already is inadequate for the level of traffic. It already suffers. Uh, continuing and extending a ribbon development is wholly inappropriate here, as both Pippa and Tony have alluded to, especially as this is not a small development, but should be granted as substantial and it's unsuitable for a village with inadequate pedestrian access through the centre of it already. Um, this is probably one of the most inappropriate developments we have seen come before this committee. And if we as a council don't stand up and fight this, as Trevor very rightly said, then the villages in Wiltshire have no hope. And at the end of the day, it is our fault that we're here because we don't have the five-year land supply, as I've argued all the time. 
And unless we have spatial, development, spatial planning and development to meet that requirement, totally inappropriate developments like this will continue to come our way. Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate that. I'll come to you in a minute, just, uh, just in a few minutes, but I thank Tony for bringing forward that uh, proposal. I want to thank the planning officer for the work he's put in on this because it's a detailed piece of work. And what this highlights is the difficulty we're under so very often as a planning authority. And that is the work of course, strategy, the validity of the neighborhood plan, the weight that we accord the neighborhood plan, given its age, vis a vis the five year housing land supply. And we have this conversation many, many times. And many times you've heard me say, I don't. I take um, exception to the fact that so many of our communities are under the cosh by the five-year housing land supply. And of course, you all know that I've written letters to this effect, and when I've um, opined that I think it's a crying shame when we encourage our villages to engage in the neighborhood plan process, which is a lot of work, it's onerous, it's expensive, time-consuming, um, only to beat them over the head and say, well, actually, it doesn't apply anyway. So. This is a tough one, um, but I'm going to go with Tony's recommendation too. Um, I don't think there's any choice on this one personally, and it would strike me as being rough justice to say the least, to see a village being impacted adversely by the five-year housing land supply where we know that there are elements of this that are out for consultation and when we might very well have different figures on the five-year housing land supply in a few months' time anyway. I don't want to see Holt suffer, so I again support Tony's recommendation. Christopher, Councillor Newbring. Um, I probably don't need to speak on this, uh, but just to give it a slightly even fairer win following on from Councillor Trotman, Councillor Ridder, Councillor Foster and yourself. Um, I, I, I was persuaded by Trevor, uh, except that I noticed that the case officer objected to including core policy 48. And when Councillor Trotman moved the, uh, his motion uh, and was seconded by, I think, Councillor Ridder, he left that out. So that helps me to go along with the motion. Um, I, I, I would just make the point that um, it's all very well to, to, to think of this in terms of um, open countryside and uh, core, core policies um, quoted, but we have to bear in mind that this is a village. It's not as if it was a field immediately adjacent to a town, especially a field immediately adjacent to a principal urban settlement. And I think the point about core policies one and two is that if... Um, those at the appeal wish to um, get this refused, those probably are very strong because, after all, the theory of the government's um, hierarchy that it has advised us to adopt and which we have adopted is to put development in villages at the very bottom of the hierarchy. Um, I mean, this is a large village, but I, I, I've got no problem, Chairman, with the... Um, um, the bare bones of the emerging, um, what's it called, the empowering village communities, which is about allowing large villages to have more development if they want it. That's where there might be a village school or a village shop or village facilities that are, are, are struggling and the village can then come for. I, I, I'm not 100% on board for the uh, approach in the present empowering village communities thing, which is to allocate a number of houses to every large village. But of course, um, this is a village. So I, I think I think I, I, I was persuaded by Councillor um, Carbin and I wish him luck with the refusal. I, I hope he will be willing to attend the appeal if there is one, because he is one of our longest serving and better planning members and he has a very clear mind. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Well, Councillor Chapel. Um, yes, I agreed with Councillor Carbin's um, point. It had occurred to me too the tautology of saying 
because it's a long village, it doesn't matter if it gets longer. Um, you know, I know too many um, long villages living in the longest in the country myself. Um, but uh, the question I really had was, um, because the landscape officer has said it's fine, does that mean that core part of C51 it's not usable? Because driving past it and stopping and having a look around, you can see it is a very high point. It's visible from miles around. Um, I just sort of, you know, to, to, I mean, that you had your, I can't remember what they're called, O-level geography escapes me, but the lines showing, you can see that it is the highest spot um, for the area around. Um, topography. And so, topography, yes, but they, they, what are the brown lines called? That say, exactly. Oh, the contours. The contour, yeah. Thank you. Um, 55, you know, that's 50 below. Yeah, exactly. It is absolutely rises up to the high point there. Oops, sorry. Um, and I just sort of feel that it's a very visible spot. And how can the landscape officer say it's fine when he doesn't know, you know, this is only an outline? Well, I shouldn't get too tortured about that. That's his view. Um, we've given ours. Um, Tony, Councillor Trotman. Um, it, it's okay. I, I know um, <clears throat> um, during conversation um, today, the core policy seven was noted, but I've just managed to get that up. I haven't got my book with me, but I don't think we'll be able to use that. Um, but I ask the officers whether or not that would need to be included with CP1 and CP2. But it doesn't look to my mind as the green infrastructure issue. Which, CP7 yeah. covers the Bradford on Avon community area, so that's also part of the framework of how we. So we could put it's, that in, it's, it's, in yeah. the mix yeah. to um, clarify. I'm not actually overly really sure whether CP51 is included in the landscape no. reasons for I, I, so, I, I can't recall. Unfortunately, that. I probably wouldn't accept that as an amendment to our proposal. I think, you know, CP1, CP2, but CP7 may be in question. It's okay, that's, you, you see that. Um, so, any other remarks by any other committee member? Can you do the vote share? Can I just clarify? <laughs> um, yeah, if, sure. if there are no other comments, and the chairman would shortly move for the vote, I just want to be clear what the motion is because um, uh, Councillor Carbon had proposed four potential um, sort of options. The first one included um, conflict comp policies 1, 2, 7, and 48. I believe, Councillor uh, Trotman, you're saying only using one, two, and you were happy to include seven, or you're not happy? I would just ask the officer whether that's okay, we can. applicable or not. I'm not sure that it is in this case, but personally. CP7, that's the community area strategy. So it does read with CP1 and CP2. So we would normally, in this situation, refer to CP1, CP2, and the um, community area policy to so CP7. CP7. But, but while I've just got the opportunity, we only have CP1, CP2, and CP7, as I understand it, notwithstanding the matters raised in uh, other presentations. There's no other detailed reasons. It's purely the principle against the settlement and delivery strategy. I believe when this goes to the inspector, we have to be clear just on those particular items. I mean, some of the other core policies would be, you know, not applicable, I believe. But I have to... Uh... So are you suggesting, Andrew, they're not strong enough for reasons standing by themselves? I, I, I'm not suggesting it. What, what I'm saying is at the moment, we just have an in-principle objection to housing outside of the settlement boundary. That's CP1, CP2 and CP7. What we don't have is a detailed uh, uh, policy and, and related reason, say, for instance, relating to landscape impact or anything else for that matter. Now, I'm not wanting to put words in the committee's mouth, but you are asking us to fight it on the principle only. Uh, Pip, you wanted to come in on that? Yeah, I'm, if the proposer is happy, I'm happy to uh, take the officer's view of CP1, 2 and 7. Uh, the problem with quoting the other ones would surely depend on whether this 106 is agreed before or after the um, inspector hears the case, or are we only doing it on today when it hasn't already been agreed? 
I, I, I'm worried because okay. it says that if a 106 is agreed, then some of those policies don't apply. Could the officer perhaps answer that for me? If I could just come back on that. The, yeah. the Section 106 matter is a standalone reason for refusing. So, so that, that, that will sit in any event. The, the, the issue I, I have raised is really the, the reason that has been it, it, the motion it relates to the principle of the development only. So we have no reasons for refusal relating to matters of detail. And that, that is my understanding of what the, where the committee wants to go with this. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm going to come back on this one in a minute. Thank you, Christo. I'll come to you in a minute. I'm also going to ask Trevor to come in for this excellent piece of work too in half a minute. Um, Beth, Councillor Thrapple. Well, you. I was just asking, um, do we think then that um, CP51, uh, say, part, you know, little numbers two, the locally distinctive character of settlements and their landscape setting is not appropriate? For, I mean, it seems to me to be quite important. Well, I think Andrew's saying they're appropriate, but not detailed. If, if I could just comment on that as well. It's for the committee to decide its reasons for refusal. And if it wants a detailed reason, then, then obviously it's entitled to do that. However, you do not have the support of your technical consultees in that regard. In that case, the landscape officer raises no objections. And that puts us in a difficult place when it comes to defending an appeal. That's a newbie. Uh, thank you, Chum. I can quite see Andrew Guest's point here. Um, clearly, when a council can't demonstrate a five-year housing land supply, uh, it follows that the development plan is treated as out of date, and that doesn't mean that it has no effect at all, but it does mean that rather than relying on policies like outside a specific uh, line, we have to show some demonstrable harm in order to... Um, uh, sustain a, a refusal and and I, I mean just applying my mind to that I noticed that we did refuse this once before um, so I've got two ideas one is that we must I think have come up with some particulars when we refused it before did we not and I see Andrew Guest nodding so we could perhaps the mover and seconder could ask for the same reasons that we used before to be um, applied uh, and then, uh, again, I suppose we could also uh, um, delegate it as a matter to officers to look at uh, the, the present situation and, and, and allow them to add on anything that they think is worth adding on. Uh, that would be my suggestion. Thank you, Christopher. Um, Trevor, you put in an excellent piece of work on this. No doubt you've got a view. And I'm, I think there are issues that you quoted or you mentioned in your submission, which we don't have. Do you, do you want to come forward with those, please? Yeah, sure. Um, I've sent my reasons through to Kieran. So, um, yeah, got those? Yeah, OK. So basically, um, yeah, I'm happy to take out the 48 um, in the first reason. No problem with that. Uh, but I would stick to 1, 2 and 7. As you say, 7 is just the Bradford on Avon area thing. So that um, tends to be slotted in. Whichever area you're in, you put in that appropriate one with it. Um, and my second one, again, was, was core policy two, so that, that, that those were quite similar. Um, it's just that we, we separated them out in that way on the previous one, and I don't see any, any reason not to do the same. Then the landscape one, okay, we don't have the support of the officer, but we had the support of the officer on the previous application, and the landscape hasn't changed, irrespective of other things which may have done. Um, one or two trees might have grown a bit, one or two trees might have fallen over, but essentially it's the same landscape. So I'm confident about that as a good reason for refusal, even if the current landscape officer has been a bit diffident about it. Um, so my fourth reason was exactly the one that's in the recommendation uh, with the informative that goes with that, recognising, yes, that that will fall away, but it still needs to be there at this stage. Um, so with that slight change of taking out 48 in number one, uh, I'm confident that one, two, three, four plus informative are, is a sustainable reason for refusal, but of course it's ultimately not my decision, Jeff. Thank you for that, Trevor. Um, Can keep that up? Oh, I'm going to read that out in a minute. Sorry, Dave, what were you saying? What new policies were um, Do you mean what, what specific policies are the neighbourhood? 
it would be contrary to the way we were saying the way we were thinking. And then they put a blanket. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we might have to craft that. Yes. Okay, there's a couple of amendments we might have to make to this, but we now have this in front of in front of us. You've got it over there. Yeah. And that's if if um, Councillor Trotman and Riddle yes, of course. substitute their name. So what we have now is the site is located in open countryside outside the limits of development defined for halt in the Workshire Core Strategy. The proposal would therefore conflict with core policies one two seven of the Workshire Core Strategy. We're going to take out forty eight adopted January 2015, which seeks properly to plan for sustainable development of housing sites in Wiltshire. The proposal conflicts with the Council's plan-led approach to the delivery of new housing sites outside of the identified limits of development, as set out in Core Policy 2 of the Wiltshire Core Strategy, which seeks to provide new housing sites to deliver the identified needs in the community area through a site allocation DPD, and we're going to have to put in there policies of the neighbourhood plan. Um, no, the, or, or, and, no, the and neighbourhood plan's fine, but the proposal conflicts with the whole neighbourhood plan. But, but we need to put policies in there. Ideally, yeah, you could, yeah. You could delegate that. So we need to delegate that to officers. So we need to know which policies of the whole neighbourhood plan it conflicts with. We can't just say the proposal also conflicts with the whole neighbourhood neighbourhood plan. Apparently, so we'll have to sort of um, wordsmith that one a little bit. The proposal would have an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the area by significantly expanding the built-up area of the settlement into the surrounding rural landscape. And I think we need to keep that there. I'm with Trevor with that, on that one. This would be highly visible, particularly from viewpoints to the north and south, and would conflict with the core principle of the MPPF to take account of the intrinsic character and beauty of the countryside and with policy CP51 of the Workshire Core Strategy, the number four as recommendation. So, uh, would, would you be comfortable with that, Tony? Yes, of course, N now that you've described it as in, in words. <laughs> we need to wordsmith a little words, bit. That's fine. That we can't just say Holt Neighbourhood Plan, we're going to have to ask officers, perhaps work well, they have a copy, working with the Holt Neighbourhood Plan uh, to put in certain policies there. There's a copy here if Trevor wants to see it. Or, or alternatively, you could delegate to or, officers I, to... Yeah, we'll just delegate to officers. To, um, to, we, we, to use the policies of the Holt Neighbourhood Plan, so you've got which there. relate to those yeah. reasons for refusal. Yes, so you seconded that, you're comfortable with that. Do we all know what we're going to be voting for or against? We do. Adrian, yes, go on then. It's a very quick one. Uh, Andrew, very wisely advised us that the landscape officer had uh, approved and uh, Trevor very wisely pointed out the landscape hasn't changed and so presumably it's a different officer but we are eight nine ten eleven here uh, just as we can disagree with the officer's recommendation that's put forward to us presumably we can also disagree to the recommendation that the landscape officer has put to us You yes. can, in theory, yes. You yes. Yes, that, that's the point I made to Buff earlier. Yeah. In which case, then, I'm going to move to the vote. I want to thank all the attendees, irrespective of what happens today, uh, for coming. I do know Holt. Um, I've got a, some knowledge of, of the village quite well. Um, I want to thank you, Trevor, for your submission, Holt Parish Council, and the members of the public for speaking. Um, it's uh, hopefully paid dividends today. And on that note, I'm going to go to, to the members. Um, you all know what you're voting for. Can I ask then for all in support of the motion proposed by Tony and seconded by Pip, Councillor Ridout and Councillor Trotman? Is that recorded that's unanimous? That, so that, no, that is unanimous. Yes, we'll do that. And... Uh, And, and I, I have asked to be noted in the minutes that that is a unanimous decision uh, for future reference. So thank you all for attending. Safe journeys home. Uh, good to see you. And thank you, members, too. Thank you. Thank you.